Hello. Today I'll talk a little bit about Swami Kriyananda, and he is definitely one of my favorite subjects. I came to Ananda in 1975, and I remember it was August 9th when I arrived, and soon after there was Spiritual Renewal Week, which has been a long tradition at Ananda. It still goes on. Uh, It's a week of classes and spiritual events to rejuvenate one's spiritual life. And so it's a very important week. And I believe that was the first time that I saw Swami Kriyananda was during that week. And I was amazed. I had never seen anyone in real life like him. And I didn't get to introduce myself or meet him personally until a couple of months later. But I remember vividly watching him speak and being so impressed and just wondering if if this person was for real because he was such a larger-than-life person, sort of a personage, a, a personality. And also, very soon after that, I got to hear him read a P.G. Woodhouse story and P.G. Woodhouse is an English humorist. He's passed away now, but he was um, living through the 20s and 30s. He was English, and he made fun of the aristocracy and in a good-natured and good-humored way, just kindly, but with an amazing sense of humor. I remember once he described a a young woman as looking as though her soul had had a flat tire. (laughs) And he he just had this way with words. Well, Swami had grown up in Europe, Romania mainly, and then had gone to an English boarding school. And so... He was exposed to this humor of P.G. Woodhouse and was very fond of it, had fond memories of it. And so he brought it to Ananda. As he was creating Ananda, P.G. Woodhouse was very much a part of that. And I remember vividly listening to my first P.G. Woodhouse story read by Swami. And I probably had this glazed look over my face and a furrowed brow and a puzzled look (laughs) because I I just didn't get it. What was all this what ho, what ho, what ho? (laughs) And these old British uh, expressions were all new to me and I just had no idea what was going on, except that everyone around me was laughing. <laughs> and little by little, I it dawned on me during this first reading that, oh, I think this is supposed to be funny. <laughs> and then it, it uh, got in amongst me, and I have loved it ever since. But Swami was very good-natured, and had a wonderful sense of humor. So that's one of the traits that I particularly prize about him. That first Halloween, for example, again, you can picture me with the, the glazed look and the mouth, the jaw opened, <laughs> I don't know if I literally look like that, but on the inside, that's what was happening. The first Halloween 
Swami dressed up as a roly-poly Swami. And he padded himself with pillows, tied pillows around him, and wore this big orange outfit with a turban on his head. And he had a couple of his disciples very straight-facedly strewing rose petals in his path <laughs> as and we were all crowded into the common dome which was the only gathering place at ananda in those days and it was after some dinner that we had to celebrate halloween and then all the food was cleared off and the I guess, contestants in the talent show for the best costume or something. That part escapes me. But people would walk across this runway of tables pushed together. And so I have this vivid memory of Swami as the roly-poly Swami walking and, and making little pirouettes as he walked across this runway of tables with the devotees throwing rose petals in his path in a sort of caricature of a Swami. But I was struck by how even playing that silly role for everyone's great amusement and hilarity, general hilarity, he was still in his spine and he just had this very sweet smile on his face. So in those early days, he did participate in some of these fun, light-hearted um, things that people did. I remember the monks got together and did little skits at Christmas time and one very skinny fellow came out in, in just, you know, yoga pants with a bare chest. He was very skinny, and, and he was the before energization exercises. And then we had another monk who was big and huge and muscular, and, and then he was... He was the, the same monk after energization exercises. <laughs> so in those days, we had a lot of fun. And I, I vividly remember Swami watching all this and thoroughly enjoying it. Another Halloween, we put on a, a very silly play that was... Sri Yukteswar meets the mummy, Wolfman, and Count Dracula. And the whole play was about how there must be a better way to live than in the murky depths of Transylvania. And there has to be a way to bring light into those murky depths and bring joy and live in light and joy for God. So even though it was a little on the edge, it was done with the spirit of joy. I think what was so much of a blessing for me personally was to be able to come to Ananda in those early days when it was very unformed my first Christmas, I don't think there were more than 50 people, maybe 75 people, but it was, that was all of Ananda right there. And many of those people are not alive anymore or left Ananda at some point. But that energy of Swami and Master grew and grew through the years. And Swami's sense of humor has been such a guiding energy in all of that. Such a beautiful spirit of no matter what happens, keeping your inner joy. 
being centered in the self and having a sense of fun, not taking anything that happens too terribly seriously, knowing that whatever comes is God. It's from God. It's for each of us, for our own good, no matter what it is. And so to live not with constant hilarity. If Swami was serious, nothing could shake that from him, just like with Master. But that effervescing joy of the soul was always there. And I think that's one of the reasons that he had so much magnetism. That inner joy is irresistible.